special thanks to Viltrox for supplying the product you see in this video. This video is written by the film guy and read by Drew. And another thanks to my models, BTS shooters, and my DOP buddy, Mikey Hammer, for helping me with shooting one of the scenes. Links of everyone's profiles will be in the description. So, Viltrox reached out to get me to review the epic 50mm T2 133X anamorphic lens. As someone who does mostly professional cinematography, I was intrigued. So obviously, I said yes. This lens is designed with a PL mount, so we adapted it to a few different cameras. All in all, we had a good experience using the lens on all of them. With the 133 squeeze, after de-squeezing on a full frame camera, you were getting a 37-ish millimeter field of view, which is a very versatile focal length. The first thing I noticed was the build quality. It's seriously impressive. Not just because of the standout moon white aesthetic, but it feels like a tank. And it definitely feels a step above anything else I've used from similar manufacturers. But fair warning, this is a big heavy lens. Coming in at just under two kilograms, it has a built-in thread for you to screw in a support, and I do recommend you use one. The size and weight was a surprise to me given the minimal squeeze factor. It might be because these lenses go to a T2 aperture, which is impressive as a lot of competitors making similar lenses haven't been able to get their lenses this fast. And on top of that, it's pretty sharp wide open with minimal vignetting, and it's really sharp at 2.8. I will also add that breathing distortion and chromatic aberration are also very minimal. So the size might be to combat all of that. Another thing you should know is that it has a 95mm front thread. I know a lot of shooters are used to 82mm filter threads at the largest, so this is something you need to consider when purchasing this lens. For me, I use my Tilta Mirage matte box and it works pretty well, but has a small amount of vignetting. The lens only has a 3.3x squeeze, so some may be disappointed, as you aren't getting a huge amount of typical anamorphic character. But there are benefits to this, such as there is typically less edge distortion, and it's easier to find focus as you aren't getting as much stretch distortion. This also helps the in-camera peaking tools to work, which is usually a problem when using it with more squeezed lenses. Also, if you're using a camera with a 16x9 sensor, you won't have to crop the image to get the correct aspect ratio. And lastly, some DOPs just want the aspect ratio in camera and they really don't care for a strong anamorphic look. But that's not necessarily me. I tend to like having quite a bit of character, but it's all subjective. Viltrox looks to have been aware that the lens lacked a bit of the typical anamorphic look. They have seemingly added an oval bokeh insert into the middle of the lens to attempt to mitigate this, giving it more character and more of a 2x stretch look. These inserts work by changing the way light hits the sensor, thus changing the rendering shape of your bokeh. But it's pretty minimal, and I do question why it's in the center of the lens. The further back in the lens, the more that insert will be doing to affect this image. I tried making my own little oval disc, and taping it to the rear element of the lens, which did help add more of an anamorphic look, but it was difficult to avoid vignetting. This is probably why the Viltrox insert is where it is, as it might have caused vignetting, light loss, or perhaps it wasn't able to be consistent across all of the lenses in this series. Speaking of which, there is also a 35 and 75 mm in this series, and plans for a couple more to come. I hope to be able to review them also, but I just want to say that I appreciate that Viltrox has brought out a well-rounded set together, rather than doing it one by one like some other brands. Anyways, back to the review. Besides the background blur, the other reason some people shoot anamorphic is for the flaring, and I'm happy to say that the flaring from this lens is fairly subtle both in amount and vibrance, especially compared to some cheaper anamorphics, unless of course you have a very strong light source pointed directly at the camera, which is really nice as I don't want every streetlight flaring the lens when I'm filming at night time. Personally, I'm not a fan of dual flaring that you sometimes see from this lens, but a little tip I have found is that if you use some kind of diffusion filter, you can soften up the secondary flaring dramatically and create a much more pleasing look. I do wish there was neutral or amber flare options for this lens, and you can look at any of my other anamorphic lens reviews to understand why. But for those who like blue, this is pretty good. I found the focus and aperture wheels to be very stiff. My, albeit cheaper, motorized follow focus wasn't able to generate enough torque to turn it consistently, and I had to switch over to a manual one. I did ask Viltrox about this, and they did offer to adjust the tension or grease for me if I needed, but it would mean sending it back to them. So you'll need a manual follow focus wheel to work with this lens, and with a 290 degree focus throw, you will likely need a pretty big gear to work with it smoothly in most scenarios, especially if you're pulling your own focus. Given the cost, it's fair to say this lens isn't targeted at the average mirrorless camera shooter. 
that is also backed up by it only coming in a PL mount, which is generally considered to be the professional standard of mounts. So if you are shooting cheap music videos, this might not be the lens for you. But if you are starting to get into narrative and TBCs and want a clean anamorphic lens with a little character, it might be worth your consideration. I've put a link down in the description where you can find it online. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, you can follow us via the links below. And we'll see you next time.